I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome to Rhyme of Praise. We're glad to have you with us today. I am talking about today on the program, God is faithful to deliver us. You know, when we face challenging situations, sometimes we have to be convinced that, that God's going to deliver us or we, right. we, we just go, we go bonkers. You know, if you study the life of David, David was always convinced that yes. God was going to deliver him. God was going to take care of him. And, uh, you know, when you read the Psalms and he he was the author of a lot of them. Uh, I, but, you know, Psalms 91 is one of our favorite, psalm, yes. psalm, favorite psalms. You know, no harm shall come near you, no yes. plague shall overtake you. With long All life right. will I satisfy yes. you. You know, you got to believe that. Now, let me tell you something. Your faith is going to be tried. And don't be surprised. Some people are surprised when some kind of trial or something comes up. But the... He, he, the He's already told us the devil, he is seeking to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes. And, and, but he said, I've come to give you life. And then I'm, Peter says that, that the devil, the enemy, goes around as a roaring lion, seeking, seeking whom he may devour. That's right. See, the enemy will try to bring something into you and he will want, wants to devour you. But that is the time that you need to stand up, place your confidence yes. and your faithfulness, knowing that God is faithful to deliver you and put your trust in him and say, okay, I'm going to make it. Because yes. God said I could, I would make it. He will deliver me. Yes. I believe it. So that settles it. So let's go right now where I'm talking about God's faithful to deliver us. I want to talk about God is faithful to deliver us. You know, sometimes when we're facing so much adversity and everything in the world is going on and you wonder sometimes how, how, how you're going to make it. Now, I don't know. Maybe y'all haven't been there, but I have, you know. And uh, with, but uh, as you face adversity, you have got to realize that your deliverance is in God. Now, how many of you have faced some adversity in life? Well, out of this big congregation, I had about 150 people raise their hand. I know better than that because if you're breathing God's oxygen, you faced adversity sometime in your life. In fact, the enemy tries to bring something into your, into your world every day. Do you realize that? He is, he is trying to destroy. Uh, Peter says that he, he goes around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now, if you've ever go and, and look at it, Animal Channel or anything like that, you will see that, that I, I was watching one of these programs and this lion was looking and it was stalking a herd of, I don't know whether it was uh, one of those things that's a deer, but it's not a deer. It's, they call it something else, you know. But, <laughs> huh? A gazelle or, or uh, what's the other one? Impala, there you go. And uh, so, but the whole herd was there. He didn't attack the herd. He waited till one of them that maybe done, maybe was not feeling good or whatever, sickly, it fell behind the herd. And he attacked that. That's what Peter's talking about. The enemy is, 
seeking whom he may devour. I want you to notice it said whom he may devour. If we keep ourselves strong in the word and realize that God is faithful to deliver us, we'll make it every time. Now let's look at, look at something that Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, 8 and 9. And I'm going to read the New King James and then I'm going to read from the NLT because sometimes it gives us a clear picture. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost for a great and effective door is open to me and there, and there are many adversities. Now the New Living says, in the meantime, I'll be staying here at Ephesus until the festival of Pentecost. There is a wide open door for a great work here, although many oppose me. Now here Paul is realizing he has a great open door for ministry in there in, in Ephesus to teach the word, but he also says that he has opposition. He stated the fact that I'm going to stay here. Even though there's opposition, he said, I'm going to stay here. So many times we want to run from the opposition, but he mentioned that uh, about the adversity, not as, a not as a statement of fear. He mentioned it, the fact that, hey, it's here, but I'm going to overcome because of my God. See, you know, sometimes people think if they have adversity or some trial comes against them, that they're not in the will of God. Anybody ever heard anybody say that? Maybe you've thought it your own self. I'm gonna, let me tell you, neither the absence nor the presence of adversity is an indicator of what the will of God is for your life. So get that out of your head. Because the enemy uses that against people. He uses it against people to get them out of church. He uses it against Rhema students to get them out of Rhema. Thinking, oh, well, I wouldn't be having all this problem if I, if I wasn't here. No, that, to me, that's probably a good indicator that you ought to be here. Because he does not want anybody to learn anything about the word so they can come out and stomp on his head. Come on. See, you know, I've heard people say, I'm having a lot of trouble. I must not be in the will of God. Now, I've heard that bunches of times in 63 years of ministry. You know, Paul, if Paul would have believed, oh, I'm not in the will of God, he would have got out of Ephesus, you know, and nobody, he wouldn't have been there to preach the gospel and to establish a mega church. He did. Go study it. If that was his attitude, he would have never fulfilled what God wanted him to do. We got to be like the apostle Paul and realize that we're going to have adversity. We're going to have op opposition, but his confidence was in his faithful Jehovah God that would deliver him. Am I speaking to anybody this morning? Anybody faced any diverse adversity in life lately? <laughs> yeah, I, I faced it yesterday. I married Bruce and Cindy Black. They traveled me on the road. I'm like, they're like, they're like my kids. I watched them grow up. And, and you know, the enemy tried to come to you and I didn't have to say, listen, Mr. Devil, you, you, you gonna, you gonna catch, instead of me backing down, I'm gonna come after you harder than I've ever come in my life. I've had to do that several times. Student Greg Smith, Memorial Student Housing over there. Young man traveling out on the road with me. And then he, him and his wife went to Connecticut, started a church. He just died in his sleep one night. Nobody still knows why. I told him, Mr. Devil, you shouldn't have done that. 
Come on. Am I speaking to anybody? Sometimes when these things happen to us, we, we want to draw in a shell. But that's when we need to... Uh, I don't know how to say it any other way. Just get, just get mean. Get mean with the devil. It's all right to get mean with the devil. It's all right to kick him and punch him with the word of God. See, you, you, you take charge with your mouth. You know, God's power delivered the apostle Paul God's power delivered the saints of old. And if he's still the same God, and the Bible says that he never changes, then he'll take care of us. I believe that. Now, some people say, well, you're sort of simple. Well, I may be, but I'm still here. And some of the ones that told me that, hey, they're not. Come on. When I was sliding on that motorcycle in Taiwan, in Taipei, Taiwan, I didn't have time to have a prayer meeting or go on a fast. I just hollered, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And that, this, you could see where the, it slid over the edge, but the next thing I knew, I was in the air, and the back, I hit the, I hit the pavement, and that back tire goes, squeal. I went up on the grass and come back down and stopped. One of the guys said, boy, you was lucky those tire, the knobs on that tire caught. I said, there wasn't no knobs caught anything. I said, God did it. <laughs> you know, hey, somebody said, well, wasn't you afraid of what they say? I don't care what they said. Didn't make me no difference. I mean, hey, I'm alive today because I, I believed my God would take care of me when I hollered Jesus because at the name of Jesus, Everything has to bow. Everything. Come on now. Anybody ever read about a man in the Bible named David? <laughs> uh, I think if you read his story, he had some problems. He had some adversity. Let's read from him here. Psalms 34, 17. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Now look at this in verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Let's read that from the New Living because it, it gives it a little better. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person may face many troubles, but the Lord comes to rescue each time. Each time. See, the enemy will come back and say, oh, yeah, he delivered you last time, but he's not going to do it this time. That's what the enemy will tell you head. That's what he'll jump tell you. But see, it says here, he comes to rescue you each time. See, David was convinced that God would deliver him. Number one, he had seen it happen time and time again. And that's what we got to remember if he delivered us once, he'll do it again. He'll do it again. He, he, he killed the lion that tried to take his father's sheep. He overcome the giant Goliath. He had to escape from King Saul, throwing spears at him. And then Saul chased him all over Israel. And he, he, he got delivered every time. In fact, if you read the story, some of the times God would tell David where Saul was. He was, when he became king, 
he was victorious over all of the enemies of Israel. Why? Because he trusted God and knew he would deliver him out of all, 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 all. again and again and again and again, over and over and over. God will come to deliver you if you keep your faith in the Word and keep the Word coming out of your mouth. Your weapon against the enemy is the Word of God coming out of your mouth. That's your sword. Come on. David's testimony, Paul's testimony, God is faithful to perform his word and deliver you out of all your trials, troubles, every time. You got to develop that attitude. You know, somebody, sometimes people say, well, they got an attitude. Hey, that's a good attitude. You need to develop that attitude. The attitude that whenever the devil comes against me, he's not going to prosper. No weapon formed against me will prosper. God will raise me up. He will set me up above my enemies. One of the verses in the Bible says. Now, look at this. What Paul says here, talking to his son in the faith, Timothy, in chapter 3, verse number 10. And I'm going to read it from... New King James and the the New Living. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me. Ooh, man. In in his life, he said, I had to be long-suffering. I had to persevere. I had persecution. I had afflictions. He said, all this happened to me at Antioch and at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. New Living says it like this, but you, Timothy, carefully know what I teach and how I live and what my purpose in life is. You know my faith. You know my patience, my love, my endurance. You know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. You know all about how I was persecuted in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. But the Lord rescued, say rescued, Rescued. me from all of it. All of it. He suffered many things in many places. Let's go now. That's what he, he, he was talking to, to uh, Timothy. But let's go read about that in Acts. You know, the first nine chapters of Acts is basically about Peter. And the rest of it is basically about Paul and his missionary journeys and so forth and so on. I don't know whether you know that or not. If you went to Ramah, you should have studied that. In one of the classes. All right, here we go. Acts 13, 45. See, now here, Paul, uh, or Luke, who was in the traveling company with Paul, he was part of his team, we might say, then the, then the day Luke was, and, and he's the one that wrote Acts. Actually, Luke's, uh, first, the Gospel of Luke, is nothing more than a letter to his friend Theopolis. And if you'll take the end of Luke and hook it on with the the book of Acts, you'll see that it's a continuation uh, of what Luke was uh, talking about. Here it is. So Luke is recounting all of these things that happened in their journey. But when some of the Jews saw the crowds, I'm going to read this from the NLT, they were jealous, so they slandered Paul and argued against whatever he said. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and declared, 
it was necessary that we first preach the word of God to the Jews, but since you've rejected it and judge yourself unworthy of eternal life, we'll offer, we, we will offer it to the Gentiles. For the Lord gave us this command when he said, I made you a light to the Gentiles to br bring salvation to the furthest corners of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were very glad and thanked the Lord for his message. And all who were chosen for eternal life become believers. So the Lord's message spread throughout the region. Then the Jews stirred up the, the influ influential religious women and the leaders of the city and they incited a mob against Paul and Barnabas and ran them out of town. So Paul and Barnabas, they shook their feet, shook the dust from their feet as a sign of rejection and went on to the town of Iconium. And they said, okay, y'all don't want to hear the gospel? Yeah. Forget you. That's, that's what we'd say. They shook the dust. That, that indicates that now, what they were saying to those people, hey, forget you. You don't want to hear the gospel? All right. We're going to go over to Iconium. And so there they went. Acts 14, 1. The same thing happened in Iconium. Paul and Barnabas went to the Jewish synagogue and preached with such power that a great number of the Jews and Greeks became believers. Some of the Jews, however, spurned God's, me spurred, spurned God's message and poisoned the minds of the Gentiles against Paul and Barnabas. But the apostles stayed there a long time preaching boldly about the grace of the Lord. And the Lord pr proved their message was true by giving them power to do miracle, miracle, miraculous signs and wonders. But the people of the town were divided in their opinion about them some sided with the Jews, some with the apostles. Then a mob of Gentiles and Jews, along with their leader, decided to attack and stone them. When the apostles learned of it, they fled to the region of Laconia, to the town of Lystra and Derbe, and the surrounding area. At Lystra, the Jews dragged Paul out of the city and stoned him and left him for dead. Uh, I believe Paul had some problems. Hello? I mean, hey, a lot of people today, they still wouldn't be left preaching, but Paul didn't let it deter him. Do you realize that five times he took 39 stripes on his back? Five times. Jesus took those stripes. From those three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a day and a night I've been in the deep or been in the ocean, in journeys often, in the perils of water, in the perils of robbers, in the perils of my own countrymen, in the perils of Gentiles, in the perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, or trouble you could say, in, tr in perils in the sea, in perils again among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, besides uh, the other things, what comes up to me daily is my deep concern for all the churches. He said, hey, I've faced all of this, and I'm still here, and I'm still telling you that he, God will deliver you and will set you free. He said his concern for the churches. That's what he was telling them. You know, you may be facing some difficult situations right now, but I want to tell you what, you need to be as, as David did. You know, I love, honey, the story of David and Goliath. I just love that story. And, yeah. and I was thinking of the fact when the Goliath, who was way taller than David, way yeah. bigger than David, and, and he was taunting David, oh yeah, you're just a little boy. And, but there David was, having confidence in his God. And over in 1 Samuel 17, 45, I love this verse. It says, then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And guess what? Right. Yes, Goliath, he took him down. He took him down. And let me tell you that what 
whatever the enemy is coming with you about and trying to destroy you, you come in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, the name of Jesus is higher than any other name, and you shall win. That's right. That's yes, right. Yes, you got to get your stubborn on, oh, don't you? Yeah, you got to get, get your stubborn on. I get my stubborn on when the devil tries to, yeah, attack yeah, us. Yes, 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 yes. Well, hey, our offer, the last, this is the last time this will be offered, is Itching Ears by yes. me, Godliness is Profitable, CD by my dad. Yes. And this book, uh, Staying Positive in the Negative World, I did, I did about 12 little teachings on mm -hmm. this. Uh, and then I, I said, uh, you know, one of them, uh, where, where are we missing it? Another one was, uh, God wants to answer your prayers. Another one is it takes commitment. Yes. Another one, uh, are you upbeat or beat up? That's right. And so I, I deal with those subjects. So all for a gift of $17 or more, you can yes. have those. And uh, hey, uh, I know that this is just, uh, at just uh, Thanksgiving time, yes. but you know, the end of November, but hey, Christmas is coming. coming you might up. want to get some of that for a Christmas right. gift for somebody. And guess what happens on Monday? Cyber sale. Uh, no, that's November the 29th and 30th, and yeah. you can get some uh, half off there of Faith Library publications. That happens this week. That's right, and you, you can get a lot of Christmas gifts. I'll tell you, no, there's not a better gift to give than, right. the, than the Word of God. So go online there, rhema.org slash store and take advantage of that. Well, we want to thank you once again for being a partner with us and helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Some people would have you to believe, as I said, that we don't have any promise in this life of any blessing, material or otherwise, but this scripture emphatically states that we do. Paul, in writing to Timothy, said, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto how many things? All things. A timeless CD, Godliness is Profitable by Kenneth E. Hagan. And a popular mini book by Kenneth W. Hagan, Itching Ears. Kenneth W. Hagan's book reveals that God's Word is full of power, power for staying positive in a negative world. These three faith tools can be yours today for a gift of just $17 or more. Simply call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or log in anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org to order. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rhema Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rhema, please call, write, or visit rhema.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.